we really got a rattlesnake over by the public bathrooms here in the campground. He doesn't want to kill it, but... Linda and I are currently in one of our favorite towns in Nevada. This is Eureka. It's in north central Nevada along Highway 50. We like to stop here. Let me show you one of our favorite places here in Eureka. Yep, that's our outfit. So the easy stop. Linda and I stopped here about a year ago for the first time and uh, we liked it because they have a, a little laundromat in the back as part of the store. So we were looking forward to it on this trip also to be able to go in and wash our clothes. Very new inside, brand spanking new gas pumps, great food. We had his smoked brisket sandwiches, Linda and I did, with fries. It's just fantastic. We got a rattlesnake over by the public bathrooms here in the campground. He's like three foot, so he's probably striking about four or five feet. Yeah, yeah, you got to be careful. Where is he? Oh, right there. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if he strikes this. He's trying to, he's trying to leave with a piece of mine. Yeah, he's, he's 30 inches. And when he's stretched out like that, he can't strike. 24. Oh yeah, he's pretty good size. The worker here was going to remove him, but we didn't want him getting bit either. And uh, that snake was uh, pretty active, <laughs> but it wasn't striking at the shovel, but he didn't, all he had was a pair of tongs and, you know, like, three foot long tongs and he didn't think he could get get at the snake without possibly getting bit so well <laughs> a little excitement for the uh for the morning so we'll be watching even more carefully we're always ca careful watching where we're going looking for snakes as we walk along but <laughs> that was just right there now frankly myself um i'd have killed that snake because it's in a campground the next car, the next vehicle that comes in could be a bunch of kids just running around not watching. But uh, I didn't want that man getting hurt either. But it is hot. Blazing hot. That just made me think of blazing saddles. But no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just sitting in the shade trying to uh, stay a little less hot. It's not bad under here. Not bad in the shade, but step out in the sun and, man. But it's supposed to be uh, pushing 100 degrees here this week. Heat wave, record hot, record high temperatures. So what we've been doing is hanging out in the shade. And then at night it cools down real yeah. nice. Yeah, at night it's really nice. You sleep good, you know, when it's cool. Yep, gets cool at night. We're at Hickison Campground. It's on Hickison Pass, just east of Austin, Nevada. What we want to do is, there's petroglyphs here, and pict pictoglyphs, yeah? And there's a hiking trail here, not very, but it takes you around and shows you the different ones in this area. We're going to do that later today and show those to you. And then for tomorrow, there's the um, Tokina, something, something like that, something like that, caves, which is not too far from here. And and it's, it's, the, the walls of the cave is supposed to be covered with petroglyphs and pictographs. and um, So it should be interesting. It should be. And there's a campground there. So tomorrow morning we're going to leave for there. And on the way we're going to stop at the Cape Horn Overland Stage location. There might not be a single thing there. not Maybe not anything, a foundation even. We don't even know. But we're going to go to that area and check it out. And at least we can show you what it looks like there. So... That's coming up too. So anyways, later today, we're gonna to go look at the uh, pictoglyphs. And one other thing we wanna add right now is that Linda started an Instagram page called Mrs. Gone Again, and she's gonna start posting on there. There'll be photographs, there'll be links to the videos, whatever, I'm not familiar with Instagram, <laughs> but that's her, Mrs. Gone Again is gonna handle that. Yeah, cause um, it'll be more up to date Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, 
it might be interesting because it'll be mostly me. <laughs> All that exploring that we normally do. It's too too dangerous. Too hot. This is a killing heat. Yeah, it is. If you're outdoors, you know. Yeah, because uh, you can stay well hydrated, which we do, but that doesn't stop your body temperature from reaching critical temperatures, you know, so you can die from heat stroke, even if you're hydrated. So Anyways, uh, the shadows are getting long. We have plenty of shady places to stand now. So we're gonna go out and take a look at those petroglyphs. Yeah. Okay, let's go. It's really hard to act like you have energy when you've been sitting around doing nothing all day, yeah? <laughs> yeah, uh, it just saps all the energy out of you. It does. Oh. A beautiful rock formation here. This must be where the petroglyphs start, or the pictoglyphs. They have both here. This rock here, first thing I notice is all kinds of, there's like a river on the left side there, squiggling down. There's all kinds of things scratched into that rock. The lighting is perfect. Yeah. So it's a good, good thing we waited till this time of day. It's easy to see things carved into the rock, but you can't really tell what they are, like right here. That's why the lighting is perfect. It provides some shadow there, so you can kind of see there is something there. What's with that perfectly round hole? Somebody's mailbox. Hard to say. Back oh, you know what I see up above? Oh, did it fall off? Was it one of those grinding pukas? No? Well, look, there's a, look up above, there's a habitation site right up above. Ah. Look at that wonderful place in the cave. It's all sheltered from the predominant wind, the prevailing wind. Let me show you what Linda was talking about. Right in front of us here is a hole in the rock that looks like it may have tumbled down from up, uh, just right up above here, maybe. And uh, maybe that was a grinding stone at one time. But hard to say, but that's a pretty um, smooth feature in that rock. Let me see my interpretation of that panel up there. What is it? I think that's a mountain range. There's a character of a man. You see that one pointy range and then there's a man in it. The, oh, inside you know, the mountain, yeah. Yeah, and then the, the, the hoops, one is like uh, their shelter, and it shows people inside. Interesting. Yeah, it's that long ladder-like one, too. Mm -hmm. We've seen elsewhere. Well, this is kind of shocking. We come around the corner and find these stairs built here. Kind of makes you wonder who built those. Maybe the three C's or somebody. Pretty impressive set of steps. I assume they lead to something. <laughs> kind of pretty up here. Maybe Fred and Wilma are home. <laughs> it looks like that, doesn't it? Just keeps going up. Really? Oh yeah. Up to the top? Well, I ain't going up to the top. No, I'm not. Not in this heat. Check out the view, though. Woohoo! Yeah. I'll go over here anyway. Wow. 
Okay, this is worth it. I'm a recovering, recovering broken ankylosis sufferer. And I made it all the way up here. <laughs> How cool is that? Let's not go any higher today. No. I had a friend that's been telling me about the new EcoFlow, you know, uh, has a battery inside. It's an air conditioning system, but it would take a couple of uh, large power stations for us to be able to run that. Uh, yeah, it'll run off a power station, but then you have to charge that power station the next day with solar. So that calls for two power stations because you have to have one to use on the air conditioning while the other one's recharging. We'd have to get another trailer. A bigger trailer so we could have more solar panels on the roof because we're maxed out right now at about 400 watts on our little trailer. Yeah, and I don't want to do that. Nah. So, yeah, we'll just have to... Man, it's beautiful up here. I'm looking out and it's just really pretty. I did have several people in the past mention that they say, oh, this, I, you know, about the graffiti on the rocks and uh, what a horrible thing that is to put graffiti over these uh, petroglyphs and pictoglyphs. And somebody said, well, that was just graffiti. And uh, so we're just putting, so in other words, people are just putting graffiti on top of graffiti, but no. That was their way of communicating from one traveler to the next. Uh, hey, there's water on top, you know, in a pool on top of this rock. Or, hey, there's a place to uh, where you can get out of the weather here and you can, you know, be protected overnight. Or there's uh, water three days to the east. Or, you know what I mean? It was their way of communicating with each other. It wasn't graffiti. Okay, these are all petroglyphs, no pictoglyphs. So these are all etched in and it's just really difficult to make them out because they're all worn away. It makes you wonder how old they are because from the designs that we can see here, it seems to be totally different from the pictoglyphs that we see on like newspaper rock in Utah and other places with the swirl patterns and the wavy patterns. And you see a little bit of that here, but. Just from what we can see, these are pretty intricate, but hard to make them out. This one's extremely intricate. Okay, height-wise, from the tip down there to the top, you're looking at about 40 inches. Width-wise, maybe six feet. Hard to make it out, but it's all kinds of etchings and scratchings, and it goes clear over that shape on that, that side right here, you know? Where were we? Outside of Ajo somewhere? We came upon a rock. On the back side of the rock, it had all that. And uh, we had just stopped to eat lunch or something. Have a sandwich, drink water. Yeah, I wish we could make that out better. That is all really intricate. And there's all this above. See, it's all kind of it may have had coloring on it one, at one time, but, you know. After seeing that rattlesnake this morning, boy, it has me ultra wary <laughs> of just, uh, because they're so camouflaged, you can't see them even close up. They don't, uh, you know, you have to be really looking. They just blend right in. That is the best camouflage ever is a uh, rattlesnake. <laughs> there was a camouflage back when we had a paintball store and it was called Diamondback and they weren't in business very long. And it had a very intricate pattern, uh, only a little green in it and some mostly dull yellows and black. And uh, the boys who wore that, can that Diamondback, you couldn't see them for anything. The ones who were wearing the uh, it, you know, the guys that were wearing things like mossy oak and and yeah. some of those, you could always pick them out. But And the Vietnam tiger stripe uh, stood out like a sore thumb too. But that Diamondback, it blends in just about any surrounding, but that company went out of business. 
And I think the reason why is because the colors faded with the first washing. So they just lost everything, you know. It, the pattern was wonderful, but the product was terrible. <laughs> well, that wasn't too exciting, but the walk was beautiful, that's for sure. Yeah, the petroglyphs are really worn here, um, which stands to reason. We were hoping those caves are nicer, and we hope we can get to them because there's a lot of miles of dirt to get back to these caves with the uh, pictoglyphs inside, and we really want to see that. So hopefully we'll be showing you that soon. Thank you.